Operator. Operator. Get me the police. One moment, please. 22nd Precinct, Sergeant Mulvaney speaking. Sergeant Mulvaney, this is Dr. Lester Allen. Yes, Doc, what can I do for you? Well, I'm in a house at 1110 Dale Avenue. There's been a murder here. A murder? Well, don't touch anything, don't move anything. We'll be right over. All right, Sergeant. Who's the victim, Doctor? The victim was a patient of mine, Miss Frances Fielding. I'm a psychiatrist, sir. You know how she was killed or who killed her? She was shot. It looks like murder because when I found her just now, the gun was much too far from her body for this to be suicide. Well, just sit tight, Doc. We'll be right over. Uh, Sergeant, I wonder... Yeah, Doc? Oh, nothing. I suppose it's much too irregular. I think I know what you're getting at, Doc. You know a couple of newspaper men will come along with us. You don't want the publicity. No. Frankly, I don't. Well, I'll tell you what, Dr. Allen. I know who you are, all right. Go back to your office and stay there. We'll be up to talk to you later. Might have to ask you a few questions. Of course, Sergeant. I'm sure I can answer them to your complete satisfaction. And now, meet Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. This is your apartment, Mary. Mm-hmm. Hold the meter, driver. The young lady's getting out here, but I'm going on. Okay. Blackie, look across the street. Hey, it looks like a sighting of some kind, Mary. I wonder what it is. It is not for us. I know, not... Hey, the police car over there, the one in front... That's Inspector Faraday's. Oh, now I know what kind of excitement it is. And that is for us. Come on. Head driver, keep the change. Thanks. Come on, Mary. Oh, golly, do we have to, Blackie? Does water have to run downhill? That was a foolish answer. That's what a foolish question deserves, they tell me. Okay, darling. There's Inspector Faraday coming out to his car. Good. Now we won't have to waste time finding him. Hello, Faraday. Uh, who's that? Who would you expect to turn up about this time? Blackie, I might have known it was you. Hello, Inspector Faraday. What are you doing in my neighborhood? Hello, Miss Wesley. What's murder doing in your neighborhood? Murder, Faraday? Yeah, in that house there. A girl by the name of Frances Fielding. Now, don't look at me, Faraday. Mary and I were at the Mercedes restaurant tonight, and I have a dozen witnesses to prove it. The girl was killed about 8 o'clock. I suppose you were at the Mercedes then? Yes, we were. See anybody around here before you went to eat? I didn't. I didn't either. Oh, wait. I met Dr. Allen here. In fact, he went right into this house. He was going in to see a patient, he said. Remember, Mary? Hey, that's right. Dr. Allen, huh? Dr. Lester Allen, a psychiatrist. I think I'll go over and have a talk with him. Farley, you don't think that... I do think, Blanky. That's something you don't give me credit for. That's something that's going to get you in trouble someday. Someday. Uh, I'll see you later, Blanky. Much later, I hope. But, Faraday, you aren't going to pin this on Dr. Allen, are you? Not unless he did it. Well, he didn't. I've known him for years. Well, then, maybe that's why he did it. Knowing you has made him tired of going straight. <laughs> I like that. Do you, Inspector? Well, Dr. Allen's a nice guy. If you're going to see him, I'm going with you. How do you like that? Dr. Allen... I'd like to ask you a few questions. Of course, Inspector Faraday. Give him routine answers, Doctor. He won't know the difference. Quiet, Blanky. Dr. Allen, when was the last time you saw Francis Fielding alive? Uh, this afternoon, here in my office. Is that the last time you saw her? Alive? Yes. I talked to her on the phone later. She called me. Told me she was terribly upset. About what? Well, she came to see me this afternoon for treatment. She was suffering from a neurosis. She was afraid she was going to kill us. Uh, never mind about that neurosis stuff. Now, after Miss Fielding called this evening, what did you do? I did as she asked. I went to see her. So you admit you were there, do you? Well, of course I do. In fact, Blackie saw me going in to see her. That's why you're being questioned, Doctor. I had to open my big mouth. Uh, well, shut it, Blackie. Dr. Allen, you mean to tell me you went to the Fielding home, found Miss Fielding dead, and left without calling the police? Without calling... Look here, Inspector. I did call the police. Y- you called the police? Now, please, Doctor, don't give me that. But I did. I talked to a Sergeant Mulvaney. Mulvaney? There's no such sergeant at headquarters. And no call ever came into headquarters. I checked but that. I don't understand. This is absolutely fantastic. Who is it? 
If you talk to the police, why weren't you at the scene of the murder when the police arrived? Why? Because yeah. the Sergeant Mulvaney said he knew me. And it would be all right if I waited for the police right here in my office. Uh, you don't tell very good lies, Dr. Allen. And you don't tell them well, either. Come on, come on. Why did you kill her? I didn't kill her. I never saw her before this afternoon. Can you prove that, Doctor? Well, uh, I don't know. I, I might. My secretary, Miss Glenn, she might. Uh, get her in here, Blackie. Sure. You never saw Francis Fielding before this afternoon, huh? No. My appointment book will prove it. All right, Doctor. It isn't going to matter much, but I hope you're telling the truth for a change. There she is. Thanks, Mikey. Uh, Miss Glenn, when did Francis Fielding first have an appointment with Dr. Allen? About eight months ago, Inspector. Eight months? Miss Glenn! Eight months, huh? That's not true, Inspector. Miss Glenn, what's the matter with you? You know I never saw that girl until she walked into my office this afternoon. Oh, I'm awfully sorry, Dr. Allen. Did I say something wrong? You said something right, Miss Glenn. Look here, Inspector. This whole thing is absolutely... Why, my appointment book shows she was here for the first time today. It shows you saw her for the first time eight months ago. Or Miss Glenn wouldn't say so. I'm afraid it does, Doctor. Here's my book. See for yourself. I'll take that book. Uh, you answer your phone, Doctor. Thank you. Hello. Dr. Lester Allen? Yes. Can you talk? No, I can't talk to anyone now. Call me back in a few minutes. Okay, I'll call back in a very few minutes. Now listen, Inspector. You listen, Doctor. You're not in a position to do much talking. You look like a murder suspect to me. Faraday, you're all wrong. Quiet, Blanky. I'm all right. The doctor's lying about the phone call to the police and about when he first met the dead girl. And I think that makes it look like maybe he killed her. Motive, Faraday, motive. What was his motive? I'll find one, don't worry. Uh, don't leave town, Dr. Allen. I may want you to come down and see me sometime. Come on, Blanky, let's go. Wait, Blanky, I want to talk to you. All right. See you later, Faraday. I'm warning you, Blanky. You stay out of this. Tell that to someone who hasn't solved most of your cases for you. Uh, Miss Glenn, show Inspector Faraday the way out, will you? Of course. Right this way, Inspector. Doctor, I'm awfully sorry. In a way, I got you into this. I'm not blaming you, Blackie. I understand all you did was say you saw me at Miss Fielding's house. What I don't... Oh. Excuse me. Hello? Hello, Dr. Allen. Can you talk now? Yes. This is Roger Fielding. Francis Fielding's brother. Oh, yes. Uh, well, just a minute. What's the matter, Doctor? Like this is Francis Fielding's brother. Should I talk to him? Yes, but let me listen, too. Is there an extension I can use? Yes, right there on that table. Oh, yeah. Go ahead and talk to him now. Yes, Mr. Fielding, uh, what is it? You know what it is, Doc. It's about what you did to my sister. What I did to her? That's right, she's dead. Don't try to tell me you didn't kill her. What makes you think I did? Her little diary told me so. What? Just let me read you what it says here on one of the pages. Kept for a year, and you're on every page. <laughs> this is seven months ago. It says, I love Lester so, and what? he says he loves me. But I know one of these days he'll leave me to go back to his wife. I envy Mrs. Allen so, but I won't let him go. I just won't let him go. Look here, I didn't even know your sister seven months listen ago. Listen to this, Doc. This is even better. Here's what it says on a page of her diary about a month ago. She wrote, Lester's throwing me over. That's... I just know he is. And if he does, I'll go to Mrs. Allen with the truth. I'll tell her everything. Listen, Doc. What? I don't know why you killed my sister, but I got a rough idea. She sort of asked for it, didn't she? Now, look. You look, Doc. Maybe sis got what was coming to her, but the cops got this diary coming to them. Unless you want it. And bad. That's a blackmail. Is that what it is? I think I'm doing you a favor. Meet me at Dobbs Hill at 10 tomorrow night. And a kind of I like to do favors. Hello. Hello. No use, Doctor. You hung up. Blackie, what do you think? Well, Faraday broke down your story about calling the police and not meeting the dead girl until this afternoon and said all he needed to arrest you was a motive. What I just heard on the phone would pass as a motive, all right. Blackie, you know I had nothing to do with this. No. Well, Dr. Allen, either this is first-class frame-up, or you're a third-degree liar. <laughs> Do we have to stay down here in the basement much longer? Only until we find telephone wires that look as if they've been tampered with. Okay. What will that prove, Blackie? Well, Doctor, when you made your call to the police, you got through to the operator all right, didn't you? Yes. 
bit before you got the police, there was a long pause, huh? Yes, quite long. Then the Sergeant Mulvaney answered. But there's no such person on the force. You didn't talk to the police, but maybe to someone here in the basement. Blackie, do you huh? want wires that look as if they've been cut? Or wires with tape on them, Mary, to cover a place where they've been scraped. Well, here are two of them. Two is what we want. Come on, Doctor. Aren't you glad you brought me? These are the wires we want, all right. Can you tell if they've been tapped? Easily. Just look at them. The wires have been separated, the insulation scraped off, and then the bare wires taped together again. Does this really prove the doctor's story about talking to a Sergeant Mulvaney? Yes, Mary. And here's why. Whoever tricked the doctor into thinking he was talking to the police was down here when the doctor dialed the operator. I did get the operator then. That was legitimate. Oh, yes. But after you got the operator, it was a long pause, you said. Yes, there was. Blackie, Dr. Allen was cut off during that pause. That's right, Mary. It was the man down here who took over his call to the police, probably asked them some foolish questions, then hung up on them. Then the man switched the doctor back in and, and talked to him. Exactly. And you, Dr. Allen, thought you were talking to the police. Well, all the time, you were talking to the man down here. Well, who was that man, though? Francis Feelings Killer, probably. I think I feel better already. You believe me now, don't you? I think so. But we'll never convince Faraday you're innocent if he sees the dead girl's diary. I've got to keep that meeting with her brother tonight. Yes, but in the meantime, we'd better work on another angle. What, Blackie? The reason for the girl's death. What would be a good reason? Well, um, money. That's enough. But enough or not, if we could find she carried insurance payable to someone who had a chance to kill her, that would be enough for me. <laughs> Back to Boston Blackie. Psychiatrist Lester Allen receives a phone call from his new patient, Frances Fielding, to come to her home at once. He goes there, finds her murdered, and calls police. He is told to go back to his office. Inspector Faraday finds no record of Allen's call and believes him guilty. As we return to our story, Boston Blackie, who is with Mary and Dr. Allen, calls Faraday in search of a motive for the girl's murder. Maybe this will work. At least it's worth a try. Faraday speaking. Hello, Faraday. This is Blackie. Now, what do you want? The usual, Faraday, to give you a little help. I'd rather have the measles. Next week, Faraday. This week, I want to give you an angle on the fielding murder. I think it's insurance. Uh, Blackie, I don't know how I'd get along without you. I do. Not very well. You know, it's amazing that you'd think of insurance at a time like this. What's well, amazing about it, Faraday? If you were any kind of a cop, you'd have thought about it long ago. Uh, I thought of it last night. Is that long enough ago for you? <laughs> well, Faraday, you're improving. What did you find out? None of your business. What are you doing, Faraday? Faking? I'll bet you don't know a thing about the Fielding Girls Insurance. Bet you never even thought of it. Oh, I didn't think of it, huh? Well, a copy of the policy is right here on my desk. I don't believe it. You don't, huh? All right, listen to this. I'm listening. She had an accident policy with $5,000 for accidental death. Mm-hmm. She took it out uh, two years ago and collected on it uh, five months ago for a broken arm. And now all the money from the policy goes to her grandmother in Mexico City. Oh, her grandmother, huh? Yes. And if you think her grandmother killed her, think again. Because she's a 97-year-old invalid and hasn't been out of Mexico City in 30 years. Well, wise guy, uh, don't bother me with your bright ideas. Faraday. Faraday! Did he hang up on you, Blackie? He sure did, Mary. Was she killed for insurance? No. Oh, gee, so now what? Now, Mary, you're going home to see a bed about some sleep, and Dr. Allen and I are going to Dobbs Hill to see a man about a diary. There's his car, parked on the other side of the road. Now, you stay down there in the back of your car. You sure it's safe for you to go over and talk to him? You sure this fellow's never seen you? No, he's never seen me. At least I don't think so. Well, I'd better go on over and talk to him before he gets suspicious. I'll try and sound as much like you as I can. Sit tight. Here I go. All right. Good luck.
Roger, Fielding? Yeah. Dr. Allen? Yes. How are you, Doc? I don't know. Let me see that diary. Sure. Here you are. This is the original. Thanks. Hmm. Don't bother trying to run off with it. I've got photostatic copies. Get me? I got you. I want you to notice something, Doc. She wrote in her diary every day. Every single day. Yes, so I see. And every day, every single day, she wrote about Doc Allen. Nice diary, huh? Pretty incriminating. Pretty valuable to me. It's her handwriting, and she kept it about a year. Hold it. I want to compare writing with a note she sent me asking for an appointment here. All right. Yeah. She wrote the diary, all right? Sure she did. Now, I'm not asking much, Doc. Only a little. Now. And later? A little more. And after that? Oh, whenever I get a little pushed for cash, then either you come across with the money like a nice guy, or I take this diary to the cops. What for? What for? It gives you a pretty good reason for killing it. Yes, it does, me. There's only one thing wrong with it. What's that? It's a phony. A phony, huh? Well, let me tell you something. What? As a doc, you're a phony, too. The next time, tell Doc Allen he better show in person. Mr. Boston Blackie. I'm still sorry I couldn't fool that guy, Doctor. Well, it was a nice try, Blackie. Uh, let's go into my office. Maybe we can think of something else. We've got to, or Inspector Faraday will come running after you I'm not with a... running, Blackie. I'm waiting. Hello, Faraday. Good evening, Inspector. I'm sure glad to see you, Doctor. I was afraid you'd skip town. No. All I did was drive out. For a little air, Faraday. After that conversation with you last night, he needed it. Quiet, Blackie. Dr. Allen, I'm taking you to headquarters. What for? Questioning. Faraday, you can't do that. The doctor knows less about that girl's death than you do, if that's possible. Well, I suppose you know all about it, huh? I know you need a motive before you can really pin this on a doctor. Give me time. I'll find one. I'll save you time. I've already found it. A diary written by Francis Fielding and containing plenty of motive for murder. Where? Jackie! Don't get excited, either of you. The diary's a phony. A phony? How do you know? Blackie, you know that diary's a counterfeit? How? How? Very simple, doctor. Faraday... Do you remember the accident policy the fielding girl had? Sure. Uh, she collected on it, too, for a broken right arm. About, uh, well, it was exactly five months ago. Well, guess what was in Miss Fielding's diary five months ago? Blank pages. If her arm was broken. The pages weren't blank, Faraday. Her mind was. About that broken right arm. The day-to-day -day account continued six months ago, just as if her arm was perfectly all right. Well, that does prove the diary was a counterfeit. It was probably written just recently, perhaps in the last few weeks. That's exactly it, Doctor. She was so anxious to phony up a long-time love affair in a diary, she forgot she couldn't write six months ago. All right, Blackie. So that diary was phony. So the diary was a frame. I suppose you think everything else about this case is a frame against the doctor, too? Yes. Who framed him? I think the girl did it. And killed herself to do it? That's a good one. That's too good, Faraday. I can't figure out that part at all. But she was part of a frame against the doctor. That much I do know. Look, will you quit trying to do my thinking for me? Somebody has to. You don't. I don't, huh? Well, Dr. Allen here says he met the fielding girl for the first time yesterday, but his own appointment book shows he's been seeing her for eight months. Explain that. I can't understand it. I can. You were lying. Just as you were lying when you said you called the police. He thought he did call them, Faraday. What do you mean, thought he did? Whoever killed Miss Fielding tapped the phone in her house and pretended to be the police. Yeah? How do you know? I did a very strange thing for me, Faraday. I investigated. And look, have you ever heard of Roger Fielding? Roger Fielding. Roger Fielding sounds familiar. How familiar? I think he was arrested once. He served time, too. What for? I don't know, but I can find out. Well, you find out why Roger Fielding was arrested. And if it's for what I hope it is, maybe I'll find out why you can arrest him again. Who are you looking up in the phone book, Blackie? Catherine Glenn, Mary, the doctor's secretary. Why? 
Well, apparently he found out that Roger Fielding used to work for the telephone company. Went to jail for stealing payphone collections. I knew he was responsible for this frame-up as soon as he flashed the phony diary, but I wanted to make sure. Oh, I see. And when you found out he'd worked for the phone company at one time, you figured he knew how to tap the phone in his sister's house. Right. Hmm. Let me see. Yeah, the only thing I have to prove now is that Catherine Glenn was working with Fielding. And, of course, she phoned up Dr. Allen's appointment book. Ah, here's the number. Uh, darling, where's Dr. Allen now? At headquarters, poor guy. Faraday wouldn't wait. Oh. What are you going to say to Miss Glenn? I'm going to pretend I'm Roger Fielding and see what she says to me. Oh, again. Happy pretending. <laughs> Thanks. Hello? Okay. This is Roger. Roger who? You don't know? I think I do, but Look, then... I have to see you. What about? Just to check on a few things. Such as? You ought to know. I ought to know who you are, but I don't. You don't? No. Unless you couldn't be Boston Blackie by any chance. What happened? Nothing. She knew who I was. I'm not very good at fooling people tonight, apparently. Darling, you never were very good at fooling me. I was never trying to pin a murder on you. I have never given you the chance, though. Well, Fielding and Miss Glenn have. And I'm going to take it, too. There's just one more thing I can do. Roger. Yes? This is Kay Glenn. What's the idea of calling me? Look, I'm scared. About what? I, I don't want to tell you over the phone. I'd better wait till I see you. What's the matter? I'll tell you later. All right. Can you come right away? Yes. Well, hurry before it's too late. <laughs> Kind of jumpy, kid. What's the matter? Nothing. I, I just want to talk to you. What about? About how things are going. You know the answer to that yourself. Great. But I'm upset. Why? Because of Frances. Well, why be upset about her? Because... Roger, why didn't you tell me you were going to kill her? That's what I'm really upset about. <laughs> that? Well, I didn't see any point in telling you about that. Or Frances either, of course. In fact, it was sort of a spur-of-the-moment thing. I double-crossed Frances, who never even dreamed she'd be murdered when she first came along with that plan. I thought it would make a better frame against the doctor. A better one? What was wrong with your first idea? Nothing. I suppose we could have shaken him down for plenty with Frances's diary and the appointment book you fixed up. Then why did you have to kill Frances? Two reasons. It put the doc in a worse spot, and we only have to split two ways instead of three, so... I killed her. Well, I want nothing to do with murder. I'm going to the police. Oh, no, you're not. I killed Francis to make the frame against the dock a good one, and I could kill you and make it perfect. No, you go no. to the police, will you? No, you Help. won't. You won't. Inspector. I'm calling a cop, huh? Help. It's you, so you don't call... Oh. Oh, you, do. <laughs> you called the wrong man, Kay. I got here first. Oh, thanks, Blackie. He was going to choke me. You can come out now, Faraday. The danger's over. Well, very funny. I had to slip up behind Fielding and slug him, or he'd have choked Miss Glenn here. Yeah, I know. And I heard plenty before you clipped him. I guess you did it that, Faraday. You know, I just couldn't get along without you. What would I do for laughs? You'd look in the mirror. Well, i got to revive this guy now and get him down to headquarters. I... Come on, you. I suppose I'm going to headquarters, too. Yes, Miss Glenn. But I don't think you'll get what Fielding is going to get. You did a good job working with me after Francis was killed. It was your cooperation that helped us break this case. Oh, I, I did my best, Blackie. I had to. When I first got into this, there was no talk about killing Francis Fielding. I... I'm glad Dr. Allen's name is clear. Really, I am. I think the police will believe you, Miss Glenn. Oh, well, for his frame-up against Lester Allen, M.D., Fielding's name from now on is M.U.D. Uh, 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 uh.